Um, but today I want to talk to you about uh, the paleo diet. I know we've talked about it before, but I wanted to bring it up again. And it, it come, came to mind for me because we were walking through a store and they had a paleo section and it had like paleo pancake mix and paleo granola bars and all these different foods, packaged foods labeled, labeled paleo. And, and it made was, me laugh. The guy that was talking to shelves was going mm, like this. Well, maybe not. You're very strange. I am very strange. But it was, for me, it made me laugh because I felt like, well, I bet our Paleolithic ancestors would have really appreciated if they'd had, uh, you know, food that was packaged special yes, for them. Yes, wouldn't that be cool? That would have been really convenient. And so, first I want to talk about, let's talk first about who the Paleo people really were. Because I think that there's this idea that they, they were the Adonis gods of, of mankind, and they were in great shape, and they were tall, and they were lean, and they were unstressed. There was a lot of me running around back then. Oh, why are you so weird today? I don't know. Um, and so I think people make up in the, their minds, they, they create these like perfect humans that were the paleo people. And that's just not the case. I mean, first of all, very few of them made, them, made it out of their teens. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them died before they were even 20. Um, I think the average age was like 25. They, if they were lucky, they might make it to 40. But think about the lives they lived. They were you know, hunters and gatherers, obviously. They were scavengers. They were also trying to not be eaten by other things. <laughs> like that, they spent a lot of their time trying to not be eaten. That, and that's that, that's motivation. That seems stressful to me. <laughs> and the other thing I found that I, I didn't I didn't really realize is we think about them as being really healthy, and you know they didn't have diabetes and they didn't have heart disease. They didn't have all these things. Well, they didn't live long enough to get diabetes, right. first of all. But Secondly, uh, they are now finding that when they, 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 and they find, you know, a few mummies that are, you know, created naturally, they do have evidence of atherosclerosis. Yes. Like, it's, the, the, they aren't as healthy as we think they are. The other thing is, they had parasites, like lots of parasites. And I was looking at hunter-gatherer societies that still exist, and apparently hookworm is a big problem for them. Mm. So... These aren't super healthy Adonis people that were trying to mimic their, their right. eating lifestyle. The primitive just, man. It's, it's, yeah, the primitive man. It's really the, the end woman, I guess. Right. It's really how they were. And so I think that's the first thing we have to realize when people talk about paleo. But the second thing is the paleo diet varied widely depending upon where the, the person was in, on the planet. Right. You know, they're the Inuit. Mostly fish, mostly fat, mo I mean, barely on the edge of survival. And we've talked about how the Inuit is not healthy. That's not an excuse, a good reason to say, oh, well, I can eat this way. Right. Yes, you can survive, but can you Humans thrive? can survive under some pretty extreme you know, conditions. Yeah, and, and then, but then there's other societies that are vastly the other direction where they're mostly tubers and, and that kind of thing. So... There's no such thing as the paleo diet. It also varied very widely by the seasons, what was available for them to find. So no such thing as like, here's a standard paleo diet. It's not a thing. It was a very um, broad range of things that humans could eat. The other thing to consider is that the foods that they were eating at that time are simply not available now. They're just, they're not, it's not a thing. Um, the, the foods that they were eating, the tubers they were eating, much more fibrous, much harder to eat, much harder to get calories out of. Um, the, the meat that they were eating, obviously wild caught, um, and the, or that they were scavenging. So I guess if you're paleo, if you want to eat roadkill, I guess that would be on the menu for you. Yes. Because that would be a scavenge thing. So they were scavenging what they could get from um, other animals that were killing things. And then, yes, they were hunting. But I wanted to talk a little bit about hunting, and I, I pulled some stats because... This, I think this is relevant and people don't think about it. Um, how often is a creature, a hunter, a predator, successful in their hunt? So I, I looked up the top six. Um, wild dogs are the most successful in their hunt, the African wild dogs, and they are successful 85% of the time. So when they want something, they get it pretty much. 85% of the time. Yeah. The black-footed cat, which I don't really know what that is, but the black-footed cat is successful 60% of the time. A cheetah, 58% of the time. A leopard, 38% of the time. Domestic cat, 32% of the time. And lions, 25% of the time. 
Now, I, I did a little bit of research to try and figure out, well, how often was Paleo Man successful? And I couldn't find, I, I did, couldn't find an answer. I found lots of things, but I couldn't find an answer on how often they think humans were successful. I'm guessing they failed to write that down on their <laughs> cave walls. On the, on the tone, they little didn't, stones. Yep, they didn't tell us. So what I did, um, just to give myself a number, is I took the top six and I averaged them. And if you average the top six, you get roughly 50%. So let's say, just for sake of the argument, that Paleolithic man was successful in their hunt 50% of the time. Now, you can't hunt every day. It just mm -hmm. it doesn't work. Um, you're, you're exhausted, the weather's bad, you have to process the kill from the day before, whatever. So let's, let's say, for sake of the argument, they were able to hunt five days a week. Makes okay. sense, I mean, I, th I think that's probably a high estimate, but let's go with that. If they hunted five days a week and they were successful half the time, that means two and a half times a week they would get meat. Mm -hmm. So basically five times in 14 days they would have meat. That's mostly plants. Yes. <laughs> it just well, really is. It's just yeah. mostly plants. Yeah. I don't know. It seems to me that, that, that meat for them back in those days was more of a treat than a um, staple. It wasn't a steady diet except for the Inuit. And like we've right. said many and that's times. that's because that's all they had. They didn't they have plants. They barely lived on the edge of survival. Right. And I think that that's something we have to consider too about Paleo Man is they were barely living on survival. Like they were barely making it. That's not the life we want right, to live. Right. And it's not the place we live in. Food is readily available. Mm -hmm. um, we don't get Nothing's nearly... going to eat you unless no. you are unlucky enough to swim in the ocean. And <laughs> or or, or be, be in the woods or and be in the woods and a bear. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we're not being chased by things. We're not having to chase our food. We're not getting the level of exercise. We're not having to defend our families against, you know, outside attacks. Like we just live a completely different life. So while I find it very interesting, um, the, the, the science of paleo and the studies they've done and how they lived and how humans evolved, and, like that's interesting. I don't think that it's reasonable to use it as a method for how right. we eat. Right. So, the, so for me, the bottom line is, even if you could replicate that style of eating, it's not healthy, generally speaking. Right. But you can't replicate it because just the, everything is different. The, the um, nutrient value in the food is not the same. Mm -hmm. The toughness, as Robin mentioned, is not, the fa is not the same. Even the quality of meat is not the same. When we talked to somebody last night about how when you buy meat in the you know, under the cellophane, before you even do anything to it, you think you're, or you're, you're buying pure meat. And you're not. You're buying a product that already has flavoring added to it. And the reason why it has flavor added to it is because they have modified animal products so much to make them bigger, plumper, more meat, faster. more fat, you know, to, to go to maturity faster, that they've lost their flavor. They no longer taste like the animal that, that you know, your grandparents or grandparents' parents. If you think about that, it probably lost nutrients, too. And it lost like, nutrients, too, it yeah. Just, it's just that the way. Yeah. So the bottom line is eating that way... And I did, I've had people say to me, I don't care about science, I just eat the way cavemen eat, which I think is hysterical. Like, if you don't believe in science, how do you know what cavemen eat? That's funny to me. Right. It just is. But, you know, okay, whatever. Um, the other thing is that, you know, we know, we're smarter now. We know better. We have more opportunity. And why wouldn't we take advantage of that? That's it. I mean, the, the thing about man is we evolve. We evolve for the better, not for the worse, hopefully. And, and you know, people <laughs> like to say, well, you know, uh, we're exactly the same. We haven't, humans haven't changed in the last 10,000 years. That's not true. We have, our, our gut biome has changed. Um, there, if people who live in places where malaria is an issue, their bodies have changed so that they, they are better able to handle malaria. Like there's a lot of things that how evolution works and how we have changed in the past 10,000 mm -hmm. years. So to seek diets that are, that are 10,000 10, years old, even 1,000, even 500 years old is really not... Uh, consistent with what we need today. Yeah, and I did find a really uh, good article and a funny article um, about paleo and eating paleo and how it's not possible. So I'll post that on the community page for those of you who are members so that you can read it. It's kind of long, but um, I found it to be interesting and, and it's kind of amusingly written, I guess. So I will post that uh, for you today so you can go check it out on the, on the page.